All right. This is going to be so fun. You know, it's funny, Jessica. Uh, I have a daughter. She's 16 years old. And my daughter, she does a lot. Of, when I go to investigate, she actually, she's my camera person. She, she does the camera work and all that. And the other day I said, yeah. hey, I told my daughter, you should watch my show. I got Jessica Jones coming on. She's like, hold on. How did you get the actress from the Marvel show on Netflix? <laughs> She's like, no, no, not that Jessica Jones. <laughs> it, it, you know, because you're a superhero. That name, you're a superhero. You don't know if you know that. No, I just thought that uh, was that's, awesome. that's hilarious. I'm so I'm so honored that they would name a superhero after me. Honestly, it's really wild. Uh, but no, it it's is. it's not me. <laughs> and and she's a badass. She's a badass person. She'll mess people up. So that's not a bad superhero to to be behind, but but the thing is, she said something interesting, and, and 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 you know I don't realize this. She goes, finally you got a you got a a girl coming on your channel talking about Bigfoot, you know, and, and when you sit back and think about it, you know, she's kind of she's kind of right because I start looking at communities right, and big in the paranormal community it's. You could say it's more even in a way. Men and women are almost equally, pre, you know, get, get the same respect. Then you go down to the UFO community, a little bit more men. and But the UFO community likes people in suits. They, they go to Harvard. But then you go into Bigfoot. It is really thought of. Bigfoot is man. It's, 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 it's out, through, out in the woods and all that. And I don't think you probably realize that you you probably inspired a lot of girls and women. Like, hey, I could look into Bigfoot because you've been doing this for what? Since 2012? Yeah, or 11. Yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. But I, and I didn't go public for like 10 years uh, when I started. So, yeah, I just went public like a year or two, like two years ago, maybe. And I think I probably have inspired some women, hopefully, yeah. uh, to get out there. But yeah, it is mostly. Uh, you, you know, a lot of men like to go camping and stuff, but there's also a lot of women like to go camping. They do. Um, you know, but I, and that's what I used to tell people. I was just going camping when I was going Bigfooting because I knew there was a stigma to Bigfooting back when I started doing that. <clears throat> and now, now it's not so bad. Now it's fun. I mean, every no, car on the highway has got a darn sticker on it with a Bigfoot. It's better because I, you know, I didn't, I didn't even think about this. I, you, you go, you, you're on Space Out Radio, but you're also <laughs> on Texas Front Porch and Bigfoot Michigan Rob. And they have a lot of women coming to their shows, and it, 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 they make it so natural. Everybody's treated equally it's natural, and it makes it more people to fall into it. But I still forget that younger people don't see it kind of like that way, and it's cool. And you do inspire me. My daughter is like, wow, that's awesome. So she's actually watching it upstairs because I have you on my channel, and that's that inspires. You know, go for it. No, you said something interesting. Like, you know, the first 10 years, you did not go – you know, you don't, you didn't go public in a lot of your stuff. Is is it because, like my, I, I felt it when I growing up too. That is it really worth it telling people because they're just going to look at you and think you're crazy. You know, was it that, or you just didn't want to bother it during that time? Yeah, <clears throat> well, it was a lot, a lot of different factors. First of all, uh, it's you know I'm on three different teams, and my teams are it, it's it's what what we researched was our business. Do you know what I mean? And so there was no reason to make it public. Um, most of the people on my teams are not public at all. <clears throat> There's one, one of my teams, the head of my team, Trey Hudson, he wrote a book over, you know, in 2020 when we were all in lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. And so that kind of opened up the door to allow me to start talking about some of our research. Um, it, there was a stigma a about it. And also what we were doing was so out there that even people who research Bigfoots probably wouldn't understand it because we're not just out there looking for a primate in the woods. We're having encounters with UFOs. I was, I started having encounters with ETs in my home when I started Bigfooting. Okay. We started, uh, we, we've encountered portals. We've encountered light beings, orbs, all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, I think it just wasn't time to start talking about any of that stuff yet. Uh, we were trying to get the research in so we could really kind of get a grasp on what we were dealing with out there. And, uh, and I think maybe that's why I felt more comfortable talking about it 10 years into it. Not when I first started, you know what I mean? No, I agree. I know it's, it's like one thing, it's like, it's one thing to talk about Bigfoot and then you bring in the dogman element or 
or, oh, yeah. or a wormhole or something and people really like wow this is you know you know what i mean you know and yeah. I get, also and it probably all depends on how you grew up too because a lot of people know you know my you know our my family's uh bigfoot encounter story is you know when we grew up you know i were hunt we're hunters i grew up in california fresno we go to sierra mountains every year hunting season you know, and we were always taught by family to respect the land, respect the animals. And they always talked about Bigfoot, like just like a lion, you know, bear. It, it doesn't matter. And when you were a kid, we didn't have internet back in our day. You know, we didn't really have libraries. There was a few. So for the longest time, when they talked about Bigfoot growing up, it, it felt like it, it, he was just part of the animal kingdom. And not realizing one day in school when people said, that's just a folklore story. And like, I didn't know he was considered a folklore story. People were like, well, how could you believe the Bigfoot's real? Before I told them about our encounter, I'm like, well, how did you believe that Santa Claus is real? People talk about when you're a kid, Santa Claus is real. You thought it was real until that day you found out he's not. So we were always taught that you respect them, they'll respect you. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. I think it does have a lot to when you grow up because I know there's parents like you, you you hide that stuff you don't tell anybody about that you they're gonna think you're crazy and you're nuts and a lot of people keep mm -hmm. that in for so long in life and it kind of builds like a PTSD in you in a way you know yeah well see I never had a Bigfoot experience when I was a kid um I never had an experience uh with with Bigfoot until I started Bigfooting. Okay. And so, uh, but when I was a kid, I did have experience with ghosts and, uh, and I had experiences with, uh, I guess I used to go outside and look for UFOs when I was a kid. So that's the kind of uh, UFO experience I had. And I don't know if I'd been visited by ETs or not. You know, a lot of times we don't remember if we've been visited, but I do know that I have a very similar story to a lot of people who do remember having ET experiences as kids, like always feeling like you're being watched when you're trying to go to sleep and putting stuffed animals along the side of your bunk bed so that there's no, you can't have anything look between the cracks while you're sleeping, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and maybe, Maybe that's just a normal everyday kid type of experience but um i think it, it could have something to do with maybe maybe there was stuff that i just don't remember but i don't know i don't know for sure um but yeah i, I grew up uh, out in the country i'm a country girl okay and uh we were we were miles away from the nearest gas station and you know grocery stores and all that stuff back back in the day today there's like grocery stores on every corner near our farm um but you know, back, back in the day, there was nothing, nothing out there. And, oh. um, uh, we, you know, I grew up shooting guns. My dad was a hunter, you know, we yeah. had taxidermed animals all over the house, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I was very attuned to like nature and being out in the wild and, uh, with wild animals. I mean, shoot, we lived in a log cabin on a lake. And if you don't think we didn't have critters coming in that house every now and then, you know, um, I'm not scared of a whole lot of stuff y'all. Okay, no. Eric, I'm not. No, <laughs> so. hey, I grew up just with a father, no mom, three boys, mm -hmm. and you know we weren't we weren't wealthy <laughs> at all. We lived in an apartment complex next to an auction that was designed for uh, illegal. I guess you could say illegal aliens that came over for the borderline. So when people went to Disneyland, our our vacation was in the mountains, which is fine. Most of our families in the mountains. It was like a, it was like a family reunion when we go hunting. You know, when we had our encounter, Danny said he had his encounter when he was 11. And that's when I had my encounter at uh, 1984. And, you know, there was 11 of us when we had had our encounter, uh, Jessica. Wow. Like, like, and, and we weren't looking for no Bigfoot. We weren't, you know, a lot of these encounters, you know, you're not even looking for it. You know, we were just hunting. And the way we hunt is half the group goes on foot. The other half drives in car. So usually the older people drive in cars because they can't walk as good as the young people. Yeah. And then and then I was 11, so I was riding with the car. And then we, we meet up. We, everybody gets in the car. We drive back to the camp spot. It was a way to keep sure that everybody's there, everybody's safe, everybody's counted for. you know. And when you go camping back in our day, in the 80s, people had respect. So they know that's your camp spot. Nobody would take it. That's the wood camp spot. Nobody touches the wood camp spot. <laughs> we camp at a place called Poison Meadows, you know, every every Ooh. single year. So when we had our counter, we're driving back. We're just driving back normally in the car. 
And then all of a sudden you heard this noise, you know, on the left side. I heard my my uncle Johnny, the famous words. What the fuck is that? I mean, that's the most famous words we ever heard. What the fuck is that? Because it was like, you know, and, and and then everybody like looked, you know, and we saw this thing on two feet. Wasn't it on four feet? Now I know bears can't get on four feet. Then of course all the young people got out of the car, start to go out, go towards it. Because oh my god. Well, the thing is, Jessica. Thing is. We were always taught that Bigfoot's your friend. Nobody was afraid of it because we were taught that they, if you trust you, they, if you trust them, they'll trust you. So, so everybody was chasing it. I remember running down, and this thing never went back on four feet, or on four legs. It stayed on two feet and chasing oh. it down the woods. I was behind because I was eleven. There's my brother was like fourteen, fifteen. We had you know sixteen, and then and you saw this thing. You heard this thing running down. But then the weirdest part was somehow out of nowhere, it disappeared just like that. No more crack sounds, no more anything. But then later on in life, you learn what you're talking about, like portals and stuff. Was yeah. this thing just a good hider, the seven foot, eight foot thing? Or can it go through a portal? So you not know, so intriguing because how does something that big just disappear? I know they I know they know the land. Maybe that's why. But did it go through a portal? Did it go through an underground cave that we couldn't see? I think it's a, a good possibility, potentially. I mean, you know, my team, we've actually documented what we consider to be a portal on a, on a video and uh, sent people in it and then back out. And uh, they their heat signatures disappeared as they went in it and then they came back out. Now, I, I know that portals exist. I mean, I know they do. Uh, I've been tasked with remote viewing targets. I do, you know, I've been trained in remote viewing by the head of my Bigfoot research team. And, uh, and so some of my blind targets in, include uh, the weaponization of Earth's natural portals. Okay, that was one of my targets. And, uh, and I, I do believe that beings that are ancient a lot of these sasquatch are ancient beings i believe that they do know how to utilize these natural portals that our earth has i don't know where they go i mean when i was remote viewing those weaponized portals i ended up on the sun <laughs> okay so uh that was odd right and they say that some people some people claim that bigfoots come in and out of portals they go to like pluto and like other planets and other dimensions you know um it's just all really weird. I think that there's a big variety of I, of options as to where they go. Um, I don't think that all of them are just going through portals. I think some of them might just be able to kind of get on a different frequency where we can't see them. Like our rods and the cones in our eyes, like aren't advanced enough to like actually see like what they're doing somehow. I know that sounds odd, but no, it's not everything's odd, but, weird, but, right? But when, when, you, when you research, when you're walking in the woods, what kind of not, not I'm not saying evidence, but but like like hey, that might be a portal. Is it is it is it like a certain kind of a look or a feel? You have special equipment. I mean, how do you know you might have the possibility of a portal? What does that look like? Yeah, well, the one that we found, uh, it just showed up in somebody's thermal imaging device. Okay, and uh, and so the people that walked into it could not see it, could not couldn't detect it at all until they got over to it. And then they said that the environment changed slightly. Okay, so the environment did change. They could feel the difference. Uh, but a lot of times, I think that's why, potentially, maybe that's why a lot of these people are going missing out of our national parks. Um, maybe they're walking the, into these things that are like portals because you can't see them at all. Do you notice that things go silent? Because that's a big one. Everybody says things go silent. You can't even hear an animal chirp, a Absolutely. bird, or anything. Well, that happens when a, a Sasquatch is in the environment. Um, I just had that happen recently. Uh, I had a buddy who uh, met me. We were I was speaking at the Georgia Bigfoot Conference, okay, and uh, and I had a buddy that uh, that was up there at the conference, and he and I went scouting uh, around the North Georgia mountains. Uh, you know, I live in Georgia, and uh, and I know I know the mountains pretty well, and I know I know the good spots, okay, that have a lot of Bigfoot activity. Some of the spots. Um, and so we went up there just to scout, you know, one day and then we went back that night <clears throat> and uh, and we went up to this particular area that I know very well. And uh, we walked up this little hill. And we were just sitting out there talking and I never heard crickets chirping and frogs, all this so much wildlife that night. I had never heard that much 
forever. And I've been going out there for years. And, uh, and it kept getting louder and louder and louder. And he and I were like screaming over each other. Okay. It got so, it got so loud to like, we were talking really loud and we were just talking about nothing like life. You know what I mean? I mean, not that life's not nothing, but you know, <laughs> it, we were just talking about just stuff, nothing in particular. And, um, all of a sudden it was like, it was like an orchestra, like the head of an orchestra, like made everything go silent. It was like, whoop. And it was deafening and we were still screaming over the crickets and it went deadly silent <clears throat> and it was so deathly silent that it made my ears hurt almost um, because it had been so loud and it was almost like, <gasps> like it was one of those things where like, it's just, it's almost shocking. Do you know what I mean? And, um, and we sat there and he's a, a police officer and a hunter and he knew, he knew there's a predator in the area, right? Um, <clears throat> usually it's the predator, or a Bigfoot. And a Bigfoot could be a predator, potentially. Um, so, but we sat there and just kind of froze and just kind of looked at each other. And we were like, oh, yeah. And you could absolutely feel, I could feel and I could sense and I could kind of hear uh, two two Sasquatches coming up from behind where he was. Because he had his back. I was, we were both facing each other. So I could see behind him. He could see behind me. And, uh, and there were two coming up behind him. And then there was something back down at my truck. And uh, that truck was about, I'm going to say about 75 yards down the road or down the way. So, sometimes I, yeah. Sometimes I wish it, I could go back in time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, it was wild. Um, we, we ended up um, leaving that area, like going back down to the truck because we just felt like we were surrounded by Bigfoot. So, Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. No, it is. And but sometimes yeah, it I wish I could go back me. in time. You know, how many times we grew up and, and you know, you heard that silence, but as a, as a young kid, you know, you don't really think nothing of it. You know, you're like, hey, isn't that weird? Everything's silence now. But you don't think of it. And now you're like, you hear that at Bitcoin area, things go silent. You know, that would have been the time to go out and look. But you don't think of that when you're young, you know, when things go silent or or you're sitting in the mountains in the trees. There's, you know, you, you know, living going to mountains up, up, uh, up in the Sierra Mountains. There's no airport. Fresno has a tiny airport. You see lights in the sky. You don't think nothing of it, but now you like kind of wish, like, I wish I went back in time when we would have researched that. You know, what if that was a UFO? What if that was that silence that Bigfoot was hanging out on our front? We have a belief that 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 the Bigfoot that we saw was not scared of us and, and, and not scared of him because we camped there every year it was our spot. They kind of knew us. You know what I mean? Like, like we knew yeah. them in a lot of ways. You, you think that could be something that, 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 that people who live in the mountains and all that, they, they know you. So they're not afraid to maybe show themselves in a way to you than most people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think the ones that go out, uh, that live out in the area that my team researches, I think that they absolutely know us. They know when we, we try to go around the same time every year too, uh, throughout the year. And uh, I think that they just, you know, some people say, well, when, once you have an experience, they mark you, you know, like I hear that a lot. And, uh, and I think that that, I think that could be, but I also think, I don't, I don't know if it's like marking. I mean, that could be what they do. I don't know. It's like they put a tag on you. Okay. <laughs> they tag you. Uh, but I think it's also just that they just know you like they're, they're able to sense your energy, you know? And, uh, and so, I mean, there, I, I am a hundred percent, I'm going to say I'm, I'm about a hundred percent sure. A lot of them are uh, telepathic. Okay. And they, it's like, we, they know before we even get there that we're oh, coming. God, yes. Oh yeah. Hands down. Right. I mean, okay. Look, 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 look at your own animal. You know, my my dog. Oh shoot, I forgot to do something for you. Oh man, you, we're talking about animals, and I where is this? I forgot to play this. I was gonna play something in the beginning of the show, and I just totally forgot. And now we're <laughs> talking about animals. Not gonna have the same effect. But here we go. Well, hello, Jessica Jones. Welcome to the Paranormal Highway, where we appreciate you coming onto our channel while me and Eliza, the uh, Bigfoot print finder, is looking for the Bigfoot. We want to thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Uh, you might not realize that you're a uh, 
You're an inspiration to the community. You may not think that, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how you're an inspiration <laughs> and your love of finding out the truth matters so much. Come on, Liza. Let's go down this trail. I think Bigfoot might be down here. <laughs> so while we uh, search for Bigfoot ourselves, try and get him on camera. Oh, there we go. This tree's been down. Give me a second. Oh, hold on, dog. This dog don't wait for nobody. So again, we appreciate you being on the channel and um, we're gonna have a fun time today. I forgot to play that in the beginning. I apologize. Oh, I, I, I try to that. make a, a, a small little video for any new person. You know, <laughs> I take my dog down these trails and all that. And, but, but, but unfortunately, awesome. Thank unfortunately you. and we did it this morning. And unfortunately oh. we didn't catch, uh, uh, we didn't see a Bigfoot on this trip and all that. So <laughs> next uh, time. You know, you know, when you look at videos from other people, you know, like actually, um, this was sent to me from um, Danny Statton right there that's in the uh, chat right here. He sent me a video hey, to Danny. check a look. It's actually up on his channel and, and it's pretty interesting. Okay. It's called Is This Bigfoot? Hold on, uh, is, is, Danny, is that the right one? I, uh, there was a video that you could see the thing move. You see, you see it, like 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 duck down, like this big brown thing, like right there. Yeah, right there. See, Ooh. There's, there's a brown thing right in. There. I know yeah. when I replay a video on Streamyard, it makes it even darker. But he <laughs> has it up on his channel. But if you look, you'll see this brown thing, kind of like just. Like sit in a way. Right there. I don't know if you saw oh, that movement. I did. It, it, it went down. Now, yeah. you know, could that be a bear? I mean, of course, of course, you know, but why would a bear just sit and I guess maybe a nighttime bear sit to watch you or instead of moving or making a noise? But I thought it was interesting and I appreciate Danny sending it out to me and getting your opinion. You know, when somebody sends you a video, how do you evaluate kind of kind of a video? What do you look for? Well, you know, honestly, I don't get a ton of videos that people send me personally. Um, I do I do see a lot on the internet though, and uh, and it just depends. It really just depends. You know, I don't show a whole lot of videos and evidence on my shows um, if I don't see it myself. Do you know what I mean? Like the the paradoia stuff and all that. I don't I don't actually put that on my shows uh for for obvious reasons i guess uh but yeah some of these videos i love them i think they're great um and i think that it's i think it's a great thing that people are out actually taking film and uh and documenting their experiences i think that that's amazing and uh i don't discount you know everybody's videos or whatever i think that it's great um uh, there's su such clear video these days of bigfoot y'all Okay, there's so many great videos. Uh, I used to look at a lot of videos when I first started uh, looking online, you know, because I used to not, there used to not be a whole lot of people online posting Bigfoot stuff. Now it's like super, just everywhere, um, and, uh, yeah, Bigfoot yeah. videos. Yeah, Back in the day really, when I was Bigfooting, there wasn't any of this stuff out there online and, except we, for Patty. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, you and I know 95% of all videos are, are faked on purpose. We know that. Some of them, but, yeah. but 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 we're looking for that five percent. That's right. And, That's and right. that five percent, and it is important to know where it did, did it even come from, what the person, because some of these videos, like you're talking about, like people just pop out, they don't even tell you who, who put it out there, who filmed it, what they're doing, where it's yeah. at. It's just like, here you go. It's like, well, well, who's this from? Yeah. I mean, I context would think, matters. Yes, because 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 I would think. If I caught something on camera, I'm going to want everybody to know everything about it because I know that people, if yourself, Michigan Rob, text around, you know, everybody's going to have questions. Where it's at, where it's from, and you should give that, you know, make oh, it yeah. where, where they're asking questions that really matters, not, well, where was this? Where was this at? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, see, we, I, I'm, a, I'm trained in tracking, like animal tracking, human tracking. And, uh, and it's important to see the context and like to see exactly like I know Danny, I think Danny just wrote in the chat. It was like eight feet 
up and up or something like that. It just depends, you know, you, you need to know all these measurements. It's eight feet up. Yeah, see, uh, it's, it'd be great to, after you get the video, go back whenever you can and measure like stand beside those trees where you filmed that Bigfoot so that yes. we can get a contextual picture of like how tall that thing was uh, yeah. in the daytime with you standing yeah. by that tree. Or if because you get like a handprint, put your hand beside that handprint and take a picture. Do you know what I mean? Uh, get no, a, get a measuring tape, put a dollar bill beside a track, you know, uh, put your Swiss army knife beside it and take a picture, you know, uh, just do something where we can tell exactly what we're looking it at. Is. Because, because you know, you get a comment like this, looks like a a, a pooper car, which which it, you know, I don't blame them. But now, when you say no, when I saw this, this thing was eight feet, then you know, okay, it can't be that. So that's why it's important because we when we look at something on a camera, we're looking at it two dimensional now. You know mm -hmm. how your zoom is. We don't know how something tall something is. You know, and and I love it when people like find a footprint. They'll put like a, an axe or something next to it to kind of show you the size because otherwise they can make something like a regular, you know, it's probably been done, a human foot, and they made it look bigger than it really is. The oh content, yes. information is everything. Hey, Pine Island Research, Jeffrey. Hey. He's, yeah, it's like when you when you catch a big like you catch like a bass like when you've been fishing and you hold it up closer to the camera it looks gigantic and so that's like the trick I know my dad used to do that <laughs> so the fish looks bigger you know what I mean and uh than it really is so <laughs> fish fishermen's always you're right they always they make their fish bigger than it really is right I yeah. caught Just hold this. It up to the camera <laughs> <laughs> you know all those trick angles and all that oh, yeah. that is so true. Because you're right, you know, like when I look at some footage, there is some things I always wonder, well, why is this even like, like here's what, why is Bigfoot just a picture? Like, like when I look at stuff like this one, where is it? Where is it? Why is Bigfoot just a picture? You know, when some people come out like, like this, they come out just with the picture and I'm looking at this, like there's no content, there's no information. There's the, 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 there's nothing. So I think that's a sign. That's a, that's a cardboard. It, it, yeah. they, it looks like a, y nothing. a yard decoration, a yard decoration because, yeah. and, and then I start thinking, well, if somebody goes, well, no, 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 it wasn't art decoration. And it's the same old question. Like does big say, say technically, let's just say technically we're going to say that was a real Bigfoot. Then he would have to have some kind of, power in a way to make it where you're looking at this thing. There's no eyes. You'll see no mouth. You don't really see any, any forms of, of, of anything. Like everything's blur. You think maybe Bigfoot has the ability to make a picture more blurry because that is, you know, that is when people say that's a stupid question, but no, it's not. Why can't we get that's a clear shot picture? I think it's an excellent question actually. Really and that's something that we talk about often. Uh, well, a lot of times, okay, so people get really excited. When you see a Bigfoot, sometimes people want to whip out their cameras, their camera phones, and just take a shot, and they're, they're nervous, yeah, they're hand-shaking, you know. But you think with, like, the technology we have today, like even these cell phones, uh, somebody have a better picture. And I think some people do have good pictures. But at the same time, I do think that potentially maybe, maybe there's something, you know, their hair. They say that there's, like, their hair is unique, right? Maybe it's got like some, some chlorophyll in it or something. Maybe it's able to kind of go blurry when you take a picture. I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, it's weird. Shoot. No, you're right. Shoot. New cameras, iPhones. I have an iPhone, yeah. you know, iPhones, you do a video and it actually takes pictures with the video and, and all the, and, and every picture that I've seen that comes from a video from these iPhones, new cameras, they look clear. I know it, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's like everything. Well, okay. Here's another thing. Uh, when we're out in the field, our equipment malfunctions yes. all the time. I mean, so it, it could also be some kind of energetic thing where they're able to make our equipment malfunction. You know, that's funny. You say that like, like, like I remember going on a pair, every time I go on a paranormal investigations or any kind, I always bring extra batteries because, that is the one thing that everybody has experienced. Battery yes. drainage. It doesn't matter what kind of footage. Yeah. But 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 I always tell this, Jessica. I always tell people, you know, when you're on a, if you're on a Bigfoot 
investigation and when a lot of Bigfoot people don't want anything to do with paranormal and stuff. And I'm like, why would you not? Because if I'm going on investigation, I my kit that I bring has equipment for paranormal. Bigfoot has it all. Because what if the thing you're hearing out in the woods could be a ghost? Could be a demon. A ghost does not have to be just in a house or a cemetery. Ghost spirits could be anywhere. And if you believe that Bigfoot's real, which I do, I believe when they die, they could also be a spirit. Their energy could stay around. Whoa. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so that's interesting that you said that because the equipment that I take out in the field, which I don't really use much equipment anymore, but when I do, I take my ghost hunting equipment. And it's like K2 meters, rim pods, uh, EVP recorders, uh, you name it, whatever, whatever, uh, even my dowsing rods. Okay. I take all that stuff out there. Camera? Uh, we do have a lot you of paranormal detector? activity. Yeah. Geiger meters, things like that that measure radiation. Fox? I, I take yeah, it all with K2. Me. Absolutely. So that's what I take when I'm Bigfooting because we have all that same and phenomenon <laughs> out there. A bag of batteries. batteries. <laughs> you know, it's important to keep your batteries like in a Faraday case or something where they can't get zapped too. So True. if you put them like in some kind of a metal container or something that will keep them from possibly getting True. drained. You know what I do um, sometimes? Like like if, I, if I'm like more doing more of a paranormal thing, I'll actually bring brand new batteries, just put it on the ground and just say, hey, use this battery. Use it. Use this energy, mm -hmm. you know, oh. anything I can. And, and that actually reminds me, too, of uh, I was just up in Tennessee a couple of weeks ago at my friend Farah's house. Uh, she and her husband have 488 acres of property up there in a cave right behind her house. And she's having so much activity from Bigfoot activity. Uh, they have a, a pretty famous dog man story that comes out of, and sightings from down the road from where she lives. Um UFOs, all, all sorts of crazy stuff, orbs going on. So me and a team of folks, we uh, the guys from Cryptid Warfare podcast, we all went up there. And uh, we, we did a, a thorough investigation of that cave behind her house and uh, in, in her property. And let me tell you, there was a lot of activity in that cave when it came to paranormal stuff. There was more paranormal than there was cryptid activity. Um, <clears throat> she had her SLS camera out uh, at some point like at night especially we would take that out and uh and i had my rim pod up there and we we actually captured <laughs> what looked like a giant a giant figure came through the cave like one of the holes in the side of the cave with two tiny ones tiny little people uh and one of the tiny ones started dancing on our rim pod and uh but it, we, we were literally saying well we were asking questions through the, you know, EVP recorders and things like that. Is this a Sasquatch spirit? You know, is it a giant? I mean, we, we were getting, I, I believe we concluded that it could have been, it was probably a giant uh, that was coming through there. Oh, congratulations. I'm congratulating Exploring Harley. He hit over 3,000 subscribers. And I like to tell people's achievements on shows and stuff. Amazing. Because you and I know it's hard work to, to build a, a great community. And we yes. all need to support each other. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't cut me off. No, I'm excited. Congratulations. I know what it's like. I mean, I'm a, I'm inching up my way up to 4,000 here pretty soon. So I'm excited um, for my subscriber. So whew. Well, I love it from Congrats. honest people, from good, from good people yeah. and all that. And like me too, you know, I, I like watching on, on uh, space out radio. And then of course, Michigan and Rob and Tex. I mean, those, those two guys are just wonderful people. Oh, the whole people They're on that folks. team are not just those two, yeah. but everybody on that team. They're all just wonderful people. Good folks. For sure. And you can't beat that. You know, um, earlier behind the scenes. Yes. People, we do talk behind the scenes. We were talking a little bit about um, skinwalkers. Uh, and all that, and, and you and you were talking about, you know, investigation that you guys are doing involves skinwalkers, and then I was like thinking to myself, like, like, I know when you go on investigation for paranormal and, and kind of like, 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 like Bigfoot on kind of what you kind of look for, and I start thinking when you're saying that, like, when you decide to go on investigation for skinwalkers, is there something extra that you have to do? 
Can oh, yeah. Paul look for Ken Walker versus a Bigfoot paranormal? I've never really thought about that. Oh, yeah. What do you guys do to try to determine a skinwalker versus a Bigfoot or dog man? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So I'll tell you how that got, how that happened. Okay. So uh, Ferris property up in Tennessee uh, is, it sits on a lot of like Native American settlements out there and as a matter of fact the last day that we were out there i was looking for geodes like crystals and stuff on some of the property in an old dried up creek bed and zook one of the guys that was with us he found an indian arrowhead right beside a geode that i was going to pick up so uh lots of uh lots of settlements there and i believe that there was a i believe they utilized those caves back in the day too it was uh it probably lived in them actually and uh and i can tell you from going out there and it was so hot during the daytime we'd go down in that cave and it was like 20 degrees colder okay or at least 10 i mean it was it was super it was like being in a refrigerator down there um so anyways back to the to the skinwalker stuff okay so before we went before she we we were i was even planning on going down there i she had asked me to remote view her property uh, and we do that sometimes. We utilize remote viewing by looking into properties before we go investigate. Okay. And so that way we can kind of get a, a grip on like what we're dealing with out there and uh, any threats that we might have and where the things are coming from and where they're going to. Um, and so I had remote viewed a property and I came up with, this is 488 acres. Okay. That's a lot. So I came up with like pods, like the word pod comes up all the time when I'm talking to, when I'm remote viewing Sasquatch. So uh, families of Sasquatch, okay? And I know pod is like a dolphin family, I think. Um, but I was getting pods of Sasquatch, uh, UFOs, uh, aliens. There's like an ET hub there at some point, uh, in some place. I never picked up on skinwalkers, okay? Um, but I did pick up on a plethora of cryptids on her property property okay well she had some other another woman who's a medium look into it as well and she focused on the just the cave okay and and i had not focused on just the cave well this woman focused on the cave and she was so i'm going to say distraught by what she saw she had two of her friends who were mediums that um, also looked into it as well psychically and they all three came up with the same information and, and they had some of my information as well because i had picked up on a shaman a Native American shaman having something to do with whatever activity was going on on the property and that it was cursed land. The land had been cursed at some point, pot potentially by the shaman. OK, and uh, and so these women had picked up on the same thing and uh, and we didn't know each other. We didn't know that we were even all looking at the same property together. And so to put all of our information together, it was fantastic. That's awesome. Um, and, and they're willing yeah, to share. And, That's awesome. And they were, we were all willing to like, we, we just all put it together and we, we had the same information. They had a, something extra though within this cave. They had all three picked up on skinwalkers being banished to this cave. Like this shaman, he had to have been very powerful. Um, apparently there was a whole lot of really bad activity going on on this property at some point, few uh, years back, but within like our generation or our parents' generation, um, so a shaman came onto this land. Apparently they were having issues. And so he came and he somehow spiritually got all these skinwalkers and banished them into this cave. That was their story, they said. And they also said that there were not only skinwalkers, but rakes in that cave. And then the woman went on to say, and the rakes are the ones that will peel your skin off of your body. And so I was like, oh, oh. crap. Okay, so now what? I'm used to looking for Bigfoot. Dog man, uh, aliens. <laughs> I can I can kind of handle that, but skinwalkers. Ooh, ooh, I never done that one before. So that was exciting. Uh, so I knew that we needed to come up with a game plan that was not like any other game plan we've ever had. Um, and I say we like I wasn't actually up there with my regular teams. I was meeting up with the new team of people, a um, bunch of uh, young men that are, you know. Potentially some of them had been in the military and things like that. And uh, they were ready. They were 100% ready to protect us and to, uh, you know, and they're very spiritual guys too. We all knew that we were going to potentially be in a spiritual battle with something in that cave. So um, I had to contact a very good uh, Native American shaman friend of mine and ask his advice on what to do. Um, because this was, like I said, it's not anything that I had ever dealt with before. That was an interesting conversation. <laughs> that must be. Um, so if you want me to, 
it, it was it was odd. Now, now the things that he told me, he said, you know, don't share this out with everybody. So I can't I, I can't share all of it out that uh, he told me because he was like, you know, just you and the, the men that are going in this cave, you guys, you share this with them. And uh, but it involved taking a very spiritual stance. Um, and it's very real, Eric, very real um, spiritual. It was basically spiritual warfare. Um, against whatever, because uh, it's it's kind of pretty evil, actually. Um, and um, it, it involved still going in there with our, you know, artillery, basically. Uh, I'm just in case. How, um, how it, spiritual do you got to be to 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 have enough to go against this thing? You know what I mean? And like, like if somebody, it, when you say spiritual, are you talking about they have to believe more into like the Bible, God kind of stuff is spiritual or spiritual to land somehow. You know what I mean? Like, 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 how do you know you have enough well, spiritual to? I'm going to say it's good versus evil. Is it? Okay. It's almost like uh, the battle that we're doing out here in the three dimensional reality that we live in. There's a, if you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have, there's kind of like a battle between good and evil going on right now. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, it's more than just, us it's something else it's and i say spiritual uh it's like it's not like we're out there fighting ghosts okay yeah, i know, I know a, because, because on, on tv shows paranormal they always yeah. bring the priest with them when they gotta fight the spiritual that's what i mean like 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 do you gotta yeah. have a native person the, the spiritual person with you mm -hmm. along with you or so you're saying which is still no matter what yes, it's just we you one. and the guys you didn't you didn't even have a a, a native yes. person with you not That's not in, not in human form, but we did in spirit. <laughs> yeah, in spirit. Okay, and is, and in well, is that oh, is that almost yeah. good enough in a weird way? I, I'm I'm intrigued. That's be. why I'm asking. I'm intrigued. Can that be good enough yeah. than not having a physical person there? It can be. Well, it, another thing that's very important is to have no fear when you go into situations like this. Okay, because on a spiritual level, this is not just on the three D level. This is on the four D and the five D dimensional levels. Uh, we we have every right to be in that cave as they do. Okay, yes, we have every true. right to be here on this earth as yep. anything else does, and that's that. where, absolutely. And so we go in with just as much authority as they have. It's almost like a priest going in to like exercise somebody. <laughs> I know that sounds. I know I'm, I shouldn't no. be laughing about that. It's no, not no, really no, funny, it's but right. it's, it's, it's like, just kind like, of the same thing. This is my thing. house too. You're right. It's, it's like telling it. Yeah. It's, it, you live here too. I live here too. It's my house. This is Farrah's house. Do you yes. know what I mean? Um, and You're so she has to live there. She has to live there. And uh, and whatever was coming in and out of that cave, which I do believe it was Sasquatch, uh, coming on, on, living on her property and coming in and out of her vicinity, her chickens were going missing. But see, her chickens were going missing, and there was no sign of her chickens, but some piles of feathers. There was no carnage. There was no blood. There were no body parts. Um, that's part of the reason she, she really wanted us to come out there is because her babies her prized chickens that she loves that are her family. Every time she would go in that cave, she would come out and the next morning, her chickens would be missing. So she started correlating her going into that cave and trying to communicate with whatever was in there uh, with taking her chickens. Um, and so there were, and there was a pile of feathers, like a line of feathers, a trail going into that cave. Also she was having activity, like something was going and smacking the side of her cabin at night and, uh, and, and it felt like there's something rumbling under her house, like an underground facility, which I did pick up on, by the way, uh, going in and out of that mountain beside where she lives. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely spiritual. Um, I do believe that there's uh, like three dimensional, like Sasquatch there that were, that were messing with her, but I don't think that it was in any kind of a malicious way other than taking her chickens. And to be honest with you, considering there was no blood, uh, you know, and yeah, there are mountain lions out there. Okay, there are mountain lions and bears and all sorts of stuff. This is in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, okay, um, in a beautiful, beautiful area. It could be anything, but if it had been like a mountain lion or some kind of predator, I believe that they would have left a trail of, they would have eaten a chicken right there probably. Or at least there would have been, would have been drops of blood or something. Uh, so I would, my question was like, well, were these Sasquatch taking her chickens to raise their own chickens and eggs in wherever they live? That's what I was gotta, thinking. You know, these things are intelligent. They probably like eggs too. You yeah, know, you they're know, like us. People look at the common people, not people like us. They look at Bigfoot, or like, <laughs> like Sasquatch, like, like they're just big animals. They're not. They're mm -hmm. they're probably mm -hmm. smarter than us. 
you know and and again like yeah. we we're talking about earlier they know when you're coming like animals can sniff they can smell things far away bigfoot them they have that ability they know when you're there they smell you when you're there so why they why you don't yeah. really see them because they don't want to be seen exactly i don't blame them <laughs> yeah you know? and i'm lucky that i, I do live in a state that does overall embraces the Sasquatch and the Bigfoot, you know, in Washington, you know, the Northwest, mm -hmm. Oregon, all the way up to Vancouver, you know, cause it's all mountains. You know, there's even a law here that if you, if you went out and shot a Bigfoot, I don't know why you would, but if you did, you could actually uh, get a uh, manslaughter for that. It's actually well, a good. law up here. Now, don't get me wrong. If a Bigfoot's attacking you, I can see you defending yourself, but yeah. I'm just saying that the state does, actually in a way take it seriously and that is, that is nice and all that you know yeah. you're also totally into the paranormal and and, and all that mm -hmm. do, do you feel like people ask me like 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 eric why do you like the paranormal so much because i'm like there's so many answers there that i that i just want to know because it's so intriguing to me you know bigfoot's either real or it's not right aliens it's either real or it's not 50 50 mm -hmm. I think they're both yeah. real, but paranormal spirits and ghosts is their life after death. It's like the most ultimate question. It's even more ultimate question as a Bigfoot being real or not, because that's flesh and blood, aliens, flesh and blood. But if, you know, our energy when we die could stay, that's mm -hmm. intriguing to me. Like, like if you could stay here, where can you go to reincarnation reborn? Yeah. You know, it's I. There's so much answers. I feel like the paranormal is there, and it's like that's why I'm always treated by the paranormal because I want those answers. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, see, here's my thing. People ask me like, "Well, wh what are you searching for? Like, what's your ultimate goal when you're bigfooting?" And I'm like, "Well, I've already I've already discovered what I was looking for. I've already experienced. Yeah, I already Bigfoot. know Bigfoot's real. I already know they're real. I've already experienced aliens. I've seen them right up in my yeah. face twice. I don't need to prove it to you." I don't need to prove it to anybody. And I don't, you know, uh, I'm, I'm in it for me. And, uh, and, and I've experienced everything that I, I ever thought I would, ex or I wanted to experience. Um, and I've also experienced ghosts. I've seen multiple ghosts and I've seen ghosts in different forms, uh, all sorts of different forms. As a matter of fact, when my brother died, I had a brother, my brother passed away about it was almost 20 years ago now. I can't even believe that. He was only like, he was only 22 when he died in a car accident. And uh, the week that my brother died, I was visited by multiple ghosts, okay, spirits. Um, but the most important one was my brother. And uh, and when he showed up, I mean, I, I was seeing ghosts that looked just like us, that were solid, 3D with skin and hair and everything, uh, dressed in like Victorian era clothing and stuff, you know, telling me thank you. And their mouths weren't moving. moving. They were talking in like telepathy to me. And stuff. And uh, looking back, I, I question. I know this is this is gonna trip you out. I question now if like some of those ghosts weren't actual ETs. Okay, because now that I've I know this is this is kind of mind blowing, right? Uh, now because now that I've experienced ETs standing by my bed, same way the ghost used to do. I wonder if those ghosts weren't actual ETs, like. Um, you know, in my mind, all I knew were ghosts at the time. Now I know there's ETs that come in my house sometimes, you know. So um, were they just projecting that? I don't know. That's, That's why I question. say you should want to know everything. You should want to learn everything because you don't know. Uh, I know this is a movie. I know it's a movie. But like, 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 like when I watched like the movie Starman the first time, knowing that when a form comes, sometimes the idea is they're not look, they don't look like you. It could be a light. And then take form of something to to explore, to look at things. You know, who says uh, 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 when an ET wants to explore, maybe you or somebody, they take a form of a shadow or I, I'm not saying they take a form of an animal or not, but you never know. I mean, you just never know. Like when they do investigate this planet, they can't look like themselves wherever they're from. They try to look like something or a shadow. So I really, truly believe that could happen. I mean, is it there a name for those? Uh, uh, I thought there's a certain name. Ron, I think Cosmic Neighbors is in the chat. Is it there a name for ETs that come and they look like a shadow? I thought there's a certain name for that. Whoa. 
that's kind of cool. I, I thought I thought there was. I was actually uh, on a podcast yesterday. I think it's Flying Chariots, The Rise. Those guys, they are awesome, by the way. Uh, they were telling me a story about a young man who was seeing penguins when he was a kid standing around his bed because he loved penguins. And so, um, you know, was that just to, was that, were those ETs projecting that into his mind uh, because he was okay with penguins? Probably. Listen, if they got the technology to come here, they got technology we don't understand. We don't know what the full abilities that they can have, what they could do. We don't know. We yeah. yeah, we truly don't know. We're just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. But we're also sharing our stories too. And I think there's a lot of people that have had experiences like us. And, uh, and we're all just trying to figure it out and connect some dots. Here we go. Uh, Enzo wrote, Chad Kellogg's um, film... Sir Nofus discuss how ghosts could be an ET. Ooh, I think so too. Yeah. But you know, and that, but I have to also wonder, like I saw my brother, I mean, and he was, okay, let me explain to you what I saw when my brother died. Okay. And, uh, and so I was laying in bed. I woke up to like all these green, these bright green orbs floating around me right? Like little tiny orbs. And then they slowly started forming into my brother from his, his boots to his jeans, to his hill figure button golf shirt, to his arms and his head. And it was, he was glowing green. Okay. And, uh, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And he actually sat down on the bed. I felt the bed move. Wow. And then he leaned over and he kissed my forehead and I closed my eyes and then he was gone. Okay, but I saw it. I was awake because as soon as it happened, I jumped up and I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, wow. what the heck was that? That was Ben. You, you know, know um, um, Amber's para world, correct? Amber? Uh, yeah, I know Amber. Uh, yeah, you two you had it. I think she's been on your channel. Are you? you yes, yeah, she has. Interview. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's been on my channel plenty of times before. And there was one time she's on my channel. She goes, Eric, can I talk to you after the show behind the scenes, you know, on StreamYard? So, yeah, no problem. And so, the show was over. She goes, Eric, I just had to tell you this. There's a person standing next to you. Okay. She goes, there's, there's this person. And, you know, and then, and then Amber's trying to describe this person. This is why I'm bringing this up. She goes, she goes, go, go, I go, did you have a person who kind of passed away? I go, actually, I, I did, but I didn't tell her any, I didn't tell her who it was. Cause at the time I never told anybody about a certain loss in the family. So yeah, when I look at this person, it looks like the hair is not real. Okay. There's a clue there. Okay. And then it goes, I see on top of the head right here. It's like, there's a circle there. Okay. And it's like, Oh my God, there is no way. And because they're like, like a hole here, a hair that looks kind of fake. The person who I think I know who she's talking about was my brother who became a <gasps> sister. My, my brother wow. became a sister. Okay? okay. So that would explain the the hair not looking real because my brother wore wigs, you know, mm -hmm. and wigs. But the whole part, what tripped me out here was uh, uh, my brother, it's, it's hard to say brother, sister, because he died as a sister, brother, but it's just like I grew up with the brother, died as a sister. <laughs> but ha got, got skin cancer right here. So they oh so so they had to take skin off the butt. So when you look here, it looked like there's a hole. Whoa! Of, of all things, she describes. Wow! It's like it's like it's like I know people try to guess certain things, but yeah, I never told anybody that I had a brother sister who died. You know, and, and it was, that was at the time it was only like five years ago. Wow! And all that and the the hair, the hole in the head. I mean, what are the chances? I know people might not believe mediums are real or not, but that's up to them. But how can you get right on the money on that? I never yeah. told anybody about that situation. Wow. I mean, it's legit. That's legit. And Amber's legit. She really is. I she mean, is. There, there's just not ways to explain these things sometimes. And, uh, and it's just like when, uh, you know, when my team's doing this remote viewing stuff, we just get a set of numbers and we go through and we, we hit targets. We locate missing people. We locate stuff like with just a set of numbers. It doesn't make, it doesn't even make sense to me. Sometimes it's like, I don't even know how this works. 
<laughs> you know, we're just pulling information out of the matrix. Uh, Do you think maybe you have an idea on why they're sticking around and not going where their final destination might be? You think, is there like yeah. a theory that you know? Well, some of them, well, I like to think that my brother has passed on. I think that whatever that energy was, was right after he died and he was just there to say goodbye because we didn't get to say goodbye really to him. And, um, and so I think that's what that was. Now I do think that there are earthbound spirits and I, and I've, I have literally had attachments. Okay. When I, back when my younger days, when I was out having fun and I lived in the bar districts of like downtown Atlanta and, uh, and I, you know, we were out hanging out late at night and drinking and doing all sorts of crazy stuff and just having a good time. And I do believe that there are spirits that hang around places like that and will attach to people who are on a low vibration. Okay. Like a low vibrational frequency. Um, especially people with addictions and stuff like that. Um, they attach to you and they're, they stick around because they're not ready to move on to the other side uh, by fear of, I think it's fear of attachment because they've got attachments to properties, to addictions, to valuables and stuff that's like, it doesn't even matter. Like here, you I mean, they say you can't take everything with you when you die, well, tell that to all these ghosts that are hanging around, like all these spirits uh, that have all these attachments and aren't ready to leave. And even, even relationships with people, um, you know, that very, my friend, Barry Littleton, who does a lot of shows with me and he's a good friend. Um, he, his specialty are um, earthbound spirits. Okay. And, uh, and he says that it's really a bad thing when we, when we have a loved one who's dying to say like, please don't go, please don't leave me don't go because that that forms an attachment to where they feel bad and they don't want to leave you because you're so distraught you know and so sometimes they get stuck here not being able mm. to move go to the light because that they're so sense. worried about you especially that like if, you're, if it's a spouse or a child or whatever they they don't want to leave you because they don't want you to be hurt when they go you're right because how many stories have you heard when somebody says it's all right for you to let go and they actually yes. kind of do Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's what we should. And I, and I know it's hard to say, not it, you know, it's hard to say that Uh, I've had so many of my family and friends pass away. I mean, I was just looking through my Facebook the other day and I was, and I was just looking at all the all my friends that have passed away that are still on my Facebook page, you know, and even in my phone, going through my phone and just looking for a phone number and like a good quarter of the people in my phone are, are passed away by now. And I'm not that old, okay? I, <laughs> it, I shouldn't have this many people that have passed away in my life, honestly. But I, I do, you know. I know. Um, me, but you think maybe think of something? God, I didn't think about my maybe maybe my brother sister was was saying goodbye because the night yeah. that that his life was gone was uh, unexpected. I mean, he it wasn't it wasn't a car accident. He, there was some self reflected type of deals, but but I remember when we went to the hospital. We didn't think nothing. We're like, oh, here we go again. It was like one of those type of deals. Then and I remember getting a phone call in the morning. And this is true, Jessica. My wife gets a phone call from the hospital and says, so when are you going to come over uh, pick up his stuff? And we're like, oh, he's ready to go? Oh. <laughs> nobody told us. He you know, passed away. Oh, my gosh. You know, like, we're like, nobody told you? No. So we didn't you know. There was no proper goodbye or, or anything because it, during the night had a heart attack and uh signed one of those forms not to revive them, revive them oh, so no so maybe I'm so sorry maybe that incident was trying to tell me to let go and like yeah. go off and then how do you explain some of this like like i know doctors say when people die they see they see things you know the day before my father passed away we didn't know he was gonna pass away he was telling my wife and i a story that he saw his mom I saw my mom and dad uh, clear in day and all that. And then the next day, unfortunately fell down or fell where he died. We didn't know. Like, and, and no doctor would say chemicals and, you know, the, the drugs make your brain this, but really, I mean, there's just too many stories of people saying they seen somebody with comfort before yeah. the day they go. Oh, yeah. I've experienced that with my great grandmother. Uh, When I went to her house to go see her before she passed away, when I walked in the room, we had not told her that my brother had died. And uh, and as I walked in, and this was right before she died. And so we walked into the room. My mom was with me, I believe, and my grandmother. 
we walked in there to go see her. She said, oh, hey, Jessica. She couldn't see me very well because her eyes were bad. She said, you're just as beautiful as ever. And, oh, you brought Ben with you. And I was like, wow. Whoa. And I looked at my mom and I was like, she just said, and she said, and there's Bill. And Bill was her husband that had died. And he had just walked in too. And so she, she was watching them stand around me. We were all standing there with her. Yeah. So it happens. Uh, they do come back um, to take us when we're ready. I do believe uh, to be there. That's, that's why I'm mm. so intrigued, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, you kind of wish you under, you know, if you can have if you can have a sit down, I know it sounds weird, a converse like a like a real intelligent conversation with the energy, with the spirit, you know. I'm hoping yeah. one day that that could happen, you know. That's I, I think that's what what I'm what what I'm searching for. But but then you put something in my head now. What if that does happen? And technically, it's not a ghost. It's an ET using because I I feel like you're saying they can read minds yeah. and they kind of know how to. How you to know, steer you? You know how to steer you to exactly. Help you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It really makes of course, me correct. Like, what if You're I'm like, we got to do ET? something? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know. I don't mean to confuse everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. I <laughs> mean, it's just easy to fall down a rabbit hole. It really is. It is. You know? Yeah. But 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 in that case, they're there to help us, right? That. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because not all ghosts and spirits that people think Adam of horror, evil. No, no, there's probably, it, it, it's probably a tiny percentage that are bad. I believe most spirits and ghosts are good people. And I yeah. just think when, we, if you're an asshole type of person, you're going to cause them to be an asshole. But if you're oh, straight yeah. and you, like, you, you know, we walk into investigation, we like to say, hey, we're just here to talk to you. You want to talk, be nice, be generous, you know. Now, there might be times if, if they scratch somebody, you might get a little... But beyond that, you treat them with respect and belief. They'll treat you with respect. Yeah, absolutely. I saw your show on Ghost Adventures. You've done a couple of those. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch that show all the time. That was the only reason I had cable for a while. And well, uh, but I but I quit watching. It got really dark. Well, it got really dark. So we, we treat Ghost Adventures as what I call uh, uh, entertainment. It is entertainment. And, 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 you know, my daughter and I, my daughter loves horror movies. You know, we'll watch. She used to, now she's 16. She's her friends and her family now. But but back <laughs> in the day. And I always say, but after a while, I started thinking to myself, when, when I worked in the cable business, when I first threw my 32-foot ladder up on a pole, you climb up, your heart pumps a little bit, right? You, you get, you get, you're, you're scared. You're on a 32-foot pole on a string. But after a while, a year, two years, it's nothing. It yeah, is nothing. you're not going to scream anymore, right? But every time you watch Ghost Adventures, anytime Zach gets touched, he's running like a little bitch. Like, <laughs> like he's scared. Like, 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 like after a while, yeah. you've got to be somewhat immune. You know Inoculated. what I mean? I, mean I, I get if you get a heavy scratch, but it just seems like it beca they became more actors versus being investigators. You know, in the beginning, they were mm -hmm. real investigators. But now the investigation part is just, it's more, Yeah. It's it, it became more Hollywood because if you watch the first three seasons, if you watch now, they add in the extra music, the extra scenes that has nothing to do with the investigation, where in the beginning they didn't. Yes. So That's they try right. to, yeah, they, 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 they promote to you in your mind to be already scared. Yes. Yeah. It, it's the music. I mean, they, they add that, they add elements to give you yes. jump scares. And, uh, you know, in the beginning they were, they were getting the best evidence I had ever seen yeah. with like the, the, the two by fours, you know, floating through the air and bricks flying over the place and, uh, all these voices. It was amazing, but, um, yeah, it did just become entertainment. And, uh, and the more that I'm into this field and into going out in the woods and stuff, nothing scares me like that anymore. I mean, I'm not saying I don't get frightened over stuff occasionally, um, but I'm inoculated to it. I, I'm totally like everybody on my teams. We're just all inoculated. Like, but we we get excited when weird stuff happens. We like and, run towards it. Yeah. And if you ever get a chance, Jessica, you, I, I'm being honest here. You should really check out exploring Harley's channel because he does a lot of investigations. And what I like about his investigations, they have fun doing it. They they yeah, they, yeah. they they laugh. They they have fun. I mean, what I mean, it's it, it's like a real investigation. They're not scared with any movement. They act like what real investigators would. Most of the time, it is slow. 
and maybe boring and not action. You know what I mean? That's what a real yeah. investigation is. I, I'm going to check them out. That's what I like. Oh, he's my Canadian buddy. He's my he's my Canadian friend. I it's just it's just they have fun doing it. I love channels when they have fun. You know, they take it serious, yeah. but but when something happens, you know, you know, you know, they get so excited. Like when I get an uh, an experience, I get excited. But he, of course, when you watch Ghost Adventures, they get scared. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and so it's not super authentic, and uh, and I, I'm just into like authentic authenticity and people putting like their real stuff out there, their real emotions, not you know. But you got to think they're packaged for mass consumption, okay? So, and here on YouTube, we're we're kind of we we get our own soul tribes, okay? Like everybody is resonating to us. It's on that frequency, on our frequency, so. It's different. Now, guys, we're about to about to wind down the show. Uh, what do you got coming up? You got anything uh, coming up, or just you got your typical shows on the weekend with Space Out Radio? You got anything like special coming up? Well, I potentially I might. Well, I right now I'm just doing my shows. I just actually came back from Florida. I took a weekend off. Uh, I went down to Florida and I was hanging out with. Uh, uh, Dylan, Dylan Monroe had an event down there. If you guys are familiar with the great awakening map, he's the one that made that, uh, the Q map, whatever y'all call it, whatever it's called. Uh, so we had a bunch of folks down on the beach this past weekend, had a really good time and, and had some vacation time with my soul tribe. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not, I don't have any more investigations planned anytime soon. Uh, I do have live shows every Wednesday and Thursday night on my channel, uh, the Cryptid Hunters, uh, the Eric showing right there. And, uh, and, I've got a show, yeah, tomorrow and Thursday. Um, and then on Saturday and Sundays, I'm over at Spaced Out Radio uh, with, with Dave Scott. I've got a show over there called Off the Trails uh, every Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern. So y'all go do that. Go 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 subscribe and, and come hang out with me. And uh, I would love for y'all to be a part of the, the, the tribe over there and on my channel. So, yeah, because, I yeah. mean, if you just go to your home channel, you know, you got your stuff uh, that you do on Space Out Radio. You got mm -hmm. uh, your remote viewing investigations. Yeah, that's uh, Thursday night. Glitch in the yeah. Matrix, which that's Wednesdays. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and I love I love uh, Matrix kind of talks, man. When you oh, start, you get yeah. so deep into the Matrix, and guys, and when we say Matrix, I'm not talking about it's automatically <laughs> computer generated. We're we're behind the scenes, but just you could get really deep with Matrix type of of conversations and all that. Yeah, I say be the glitch in the matrix. Be the glitch, okay? And I think that's what we are, Eric. We're the glitch in the matrix. Um, you know, we're out here putting out interesting information, uh, ha having discussions that are outside the box, and uh, and telling our stories. And I think that that is so needed right now by everybody in the world. Okay, sure. so I I hope that everybody will put your stories out there. And uh, and, and yeah, send us those weird videos. I like watching them. Us. I love them. <laughs> and, and, and people, this Friday, I'm doing a Medell Effect show. Hopefully, I can get my brother on for the Medell Effect show. And we always talk about Matrix, our uh, t time travel. Like, if, if Medell Effect is real, is it caused by a Matrix? Is it caused by a time travel? You know, our multiverse. You know, we, we can get it pretty dirty and deep into that kind of conversation and tomorrow on my channel is paranormal Thursday. not tomorrow tomorrow's wednesday thursday is paranormal thursday and i got ghost dragon coming on because he had a, an experience on air that we're going to talk about and uh mm -hmm. i'm going to try to get uh paranormal uh, i'm not paranormal um uh paranormal pixie laura on laura. yeah yeah because she was on with ghost dragon when they had this mate on on film they had this thing that floated in front of them that they felt oh. that. Yeah. And, and we're going to talk about that. Like, like, like that kind of like dive deep, like, like, did you feel something for that? Or what do you think it was? So, so we're going to talk about, we're going to dive deep into the paranormal on Thursday, but Jessica, man, we could talk for hours. I mean, I mean, heck yeah. I, I, I tell people all the time. It's kind of funny that, that I got invited to a Bigfoot Michigan Rob's channel and, and I was supposed to be the guest. But I was like, I was like almost taking over in a way. Like, I'm more intrigued with Jessica than me. I want to know more about her. So it was like, and Rob's like, you know, Eric, I, I hope you know this is not your channel. <laughs> it was like, remember that, was, just, that was fun. But, but yeah. when you're with friends like that, you know yeah. what I mean? You could, you feel like you could just talk about anything. It's like, yeah. you're not cutting people off. You're just, we're all friends here, and that's what's great about yeah. the community. Absolutely, having that, having that feeling. 
So beyond that, oh, yeah. I do truly want to thank you. And I, I do mean it that you are inspiration to a lot of young people and to, for women to, for my daughter, like she said, like, it's great to see a woman talking about Bigfoot. We need more of it. And I think she's absolutely right. And you're, you're part of that trailblazing, getting, you know, getting it out there. Like anybody can have an experience. Doesn't matter if you're a male, female, gay, straight, doesn't matter. Anybody can have an experience and, uh, you know, it's time for people to you know, talk about it more. And then I yeah. think because of social media, the one good thing about social media is people are expressing now. They have the opportunity to come out and join these communities that su will support you and not bash you behind the back and stuff. That's right. That's right. Shout out to your daughter, by the way. I, I bet she's a little badass. I bet. Just like your daddy. So, oh, she's my, uh, oh, she's yeah. my uh, 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 record recorder. She, she, she's my, she's my camera woman. I love that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Those are such kind words, Eric. Thank you so much. Um, no you know, problem. I've just been out here having fun and, uh, and I never knew that like me going out in the woods with a bunch of strange men looking for Bigfoot was going to have me ending up here talking on all these shows about my experiences. I, I never in a million years thought this would be my future. <laughs> right. You know? You're right. You never thought yeah. that people actually want to listen to me. Yes. <laughs> really about care? Bigfoot. What? what i know it's a it shocker is. it really is it's it a really shocker. is and it's just going to grow more and more every year you know people oh, yeah. get more confidence they see they see people talking about it they're not afraid anymore that's what's that's great right. thing about about the variety of all different channels and there's enough channels for everybody you know you don't have Tell to try me. to catch everything live you can watch it later on and uh but beyond yeah. that i won't we're gonna let her go because i know <laughs> i know i'm keeping her on too long but oh no beyond that fun. people um yeah. <laughs> Come back Thursday. Come back Thursday. Beyond that, we'll see you guys later. Uh -huh.